says in the last days, God will restore the tabernacle of David in the last days. And uh, did you see the video, the movie we did, the one on movie? So talks a lot about this in there. You know, how David was uh, king. He was born as king, you know. Pilate said, are you king? He said, for this purpose I was born. He was born to be king, but he had to ascend to heaven for the nation of Israel to be born until it was born so he had the nation to be king over, you know, and king in. Because David started 24-7, not as a pastor of a local church, but he started as the king of Israel. He was the king of the nation that started 24-7. Amen? Praise God. And so we know that as the tabernacle of David is being restored, it's a process. Amen? Mm -hmm. And the climax of it will be that the son of David, who also will be king of Israel, Yeshua, will reign as king over Israel, and 24-7 will be fully established. It will be like the climax of the restoration <coughs> of the tabernacle of David will be when Yeshua comes back and puts his feet on this mountain and takes up the throne of David. Yeah. So, yes. what's been happening, uh, you know, since in 48 Israel was reborn as a nation, in, in 87 when we started here, there was only 24 places that this was happening. But in 97 and 98, something amazing happened. God started blowing on 24-7 in an awesome way, all over the world. We were in Azusa Street, and God had us call leaders together, and we prayed for God to blow on 24-7. At that time, I had no idea that Azusa Street was a 24-7. But it was spontaneous. For three and a half years, they never stopped 24-7 worship and intercession, because people just spontaneously came. It wasn't organized, it just never stopped for three and a half years. So it was, it was a sovereign, like, Spontaneous 24-7 that just never stopped. And I didn't even find that out until 2006 when we went to the Bicentennial. But the day we hit the ground in Azusa Street, it was, it was the anniversary of Azusa Street. We didn't even know. But we prayed for God to blow from the ends of the earth back to Jerusalem, birthing 24-7. So it was amazing. But from that time until today, in the last 10, uh, 12 years, you know, it's grown from something like 300 to like, uh, you know, 20,000 places in the world where people are worshiping and praying 24 hours a day. So, uh, but something was happening at that time. This, the house of prayer was like a birthing place for 24-7. People started coming from all over the world here, and, and even we had a watchman school. And the watchman school became like a uh, maternity ward for birthing 24-7, you know. People were coming and they were just travailing and weeping and it's like God was birthing the whole 24-7. The whole Everyone was coming and going back starting 24-7 all over the world. This was like in, in 97, 98, 99, right in that whole time period. Uh, God was using it as a place of birthing 24-7. I mean, that continues until today. But there was something sovereign in that one year period where it was just happening in a, a major way. Something prophetic was happening in the birthing of 24-7 from, you know, the place of his throne, from the place uh, where he will come, went to heaven, where he will come back from. Uh, so I, I believe that there's something, you know, even in this prophetic heart school, I don't know how the God, God has been leading you until now, but I believe that even in the rest of the school, he will lead you in in prophetic intercession, uh, or <coughs> what I call pro prophetic uh, worship, intercessory worship, uh, believing God that what's happening here, that God will birth yeah. the restoration of the heart all over the world, you know, because I believe this school marks a line in the sand where we're going to see a great change in this whole dynamic. And it's interesting also that uh, Michael is even God's downloaded him with, you know, manufacturing harps, inventing harps, and they're going to be uh, released in a way that they've never been released. Practically, the people will be able to use them all over the world. So I believe that this school marks a shift, and that you can, through prophetic intercessory, intercessory, intercessory worship, during these days, 
believe God for the fullness yes. of the birthing from Zion, the law going forth from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, the fullness of the paradigm shift of the harp being used again as the instrument of, as the primary instrument of not only instrumental music, background music, you know, but leading worship. Hallelujah. Amen. David led worship from the harp, you know. It was awesome to see Michael leading worship in the convocation with some other young people, leading from the harp. Most places the harp has not been an, an instrument of leading worship. It's been an instrument of instrumental worship, background music, you know, orchestras, all this kind of thing. But I believe that God wants to move the harp to the forefront as an instrument of leading worship. And God is going to bring an unusual anointing upon the harp as an instrument of leading worship. And so we see that this is true in heaven. Uh, when we look in uh, Revelations chapter... Uh, I want to go into one other thing. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. Now David, it says in the last verses of the Bible that Yeshua says, the second last thing he says in the Bible is that I am the root and the offspring of David. Amen? Yeshua it doesn't say he's the root and offspring of Abraham. He says he's the root and offspring of David. Like that um, harpist playing their harps. In other words, the harps are going to be released in the fullest way. I mean, first of all, the 24 elders from heaven will come down with their harps. Amen. I mean, they're going to, his kingdom is going to come on earth as it is in heaven. So they're going to be playing their harps in Jerusalem, apparently, right? Because the kingdom is coming down. So we're, the, the prophetic harp being released at this time, it's like, the shift, like what happened with 24-7, you know, when we started in 87 here, you know, it's gone from like a few dozen to 20,000. This was the beginning of a shift in terms of the worship, 24-7 in heaven going on for 2,000 years. Finally, it starts coming back to the earth as it is in heaven because it's the time of the throne of God is about to be transferred from heaven to earth. Amen? At the second coming, it will be transferred from heaven to earth. And so David, David's throne, like I say, has nothing to do with heaven. David's throne has to do with earth. Amen? Because the, the throne of David is where King David reigned in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount over the kingdom of David. But the son of David, Yeshua, is going to come back and take up the throne of David and reign as king of Israel, but king of the whole planet. Amen? Praise God. And that will be the fullness of the restoration of the tabernacle of David. So this scripture that we're talking about in Revelation 11, 14, has nothing to do with heaven. This is on the earth. Amen? I mean, heaven's coming to earth. But what I mean, this is David's throne being reestablished in Jerusalem. Because when he's talking about standing on Mount Zion, he's not talking about heaven. He's talking about this Mount Zion. Amen? The Lamb is going to stand on this Mount Zion on the earth. Praise God. And there will be the sound of rushing waters. And I heard a voice. And the sound I heard was the harpists playing their hearts. Hallelujah. Yeah. This you're, you're bringing birth times. You're the first fruits of the breakthrough towards this happening. Amen. You're preparing the way for this day when this will happen in Revelation chapter 14. They sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. And those these are those who did not defile themselves with women, for they kept themselves pure. They followed the Lamb wherever He goes. They were purchased from among men and offered as first fruits to God and the Lamb. So, praise God. This is the destiny of where things are going. Amen. Praise God. From heaven to earth. 
and your first fruits, a little first fruits, preparing the way for the heart to be restored, not only from heaven to earth. Amen. It's been happening. I don't know if there's any guitars in heaven. It doesn't say. But surely there's the heavens full, filled with heart worship. Amen. Praise God. It seems to me that there is the instrument in heaven. Amen. Amen. And God is restoring all things. So it will be restored on earth and on Mount Zion. When Yeshua puts his feet on Mount Zion, it says that the sound of the harpists will be playing with their harps on Mount Zion. Hallelujah. So you're called to the kingdom for such a time as this. To prepare the way for the day when the king will be standing on Mount Zion. Hallelujah. And the sound of the harpists will be playing their harps with Yeshua. Praise God. So I believe we're destined to see the harp begin to replace the guitar as, a pri as the primary instrument of leading worship because he says that his kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. And the harp is not only mentioned as the instrument of worship in heaven, here it says specifically that it will be the sound of the harp Harpists playing their harps with Yeshua on Mount Zion on the earth. Amen? When the day, throne of David is being restored, the tabernacle of David is being restored. Hallelujah.